special events that we hold here at Wakefield Memorial High School and um, it's something that I know the students as a tradition pass on in terms of their respect and uh, care for our, um, our veterans here in our town and surrounding towns. I'd like to thank you all again for your service to our country. So I have the privilege of opening the presentation uh, for today. And as you know, we have two honored guests joining us uh, here to share their experiences and, and take some questions from you all um, because they, uh, they said this is the most important part of their day. They're meeting the governor and all that stuff later, but uh, uh, one of the honorees just, just mentioned to me this is the most important part of their day, so that's a real special thing. Um, I'd like to welcome them one more time to start the ceremony. And as many of you have read it and know already, the Congressional Medal of Honor is our nation's highest military citation bestowed upon an individual serving in the armed services of the United States. It's given to those who have exhibited valor and action against the enemy force. 
and um, there aren't too many um, in the country who have been awarded uh, this uh, citation. Um, I've read in the papers uh, for the past couple of days how much this convention means to the city of Boston and how much it means to those uh, Medal of Honor honorees. And so they've come to Boston um, three times, I believe, and this is the third time. It's the only city that they repeat their convention in, and they're really proud to be in this area. And um, I'm hoping today we'll add to that experience for the two gentlemen who are here. Um, Wayne Lamar as well is privileged to host two gentlemen awarded this medal this morning. It's going by Ms. Um, Tori Trinbaum, who's a senior here. I'd like you to welcome Mr. Harvey Burnham, who served in Vietnam in the U.S. Marine Corps. under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Once again, on behalf of Wakefield Memorial High School, I'd just like to say thank you to uh, all of our guests and to the members of our military who are here. Uh, thank you for your service. It's, it's really an honor and a, a privilege. I'm very humbled to be able to speak in front of you guys today. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity 
at the risk of his own life above and beyond the call of duty. When the company was suddenly pinned down by a hail of extremely accurate enemy fire and was quickly separated from the remainder of the battalion, Lieutenant Barnum quickly made a hazardous reconnaissance of the area, seeking targets for his artillery. Finding the rifle company commander mortally wounded and the radio operator killed, he, with complete disregard for his safety, gave aid to the dying commander, then removed the radio from the dead operator and strapped it to himself. He immediately assumed command of the rifle company and moving once into the midst of heavy fire, rallying and giving encouragement to all units, reorganized them to replace the loss of key personnel and led their attack on enemy positions from which the deadly fire continued to come. His sound and swift decisions and obvious calm served to stabilize the badly decimated units and his gallant example stood as he exposed repeatedly to, to point out targets served as an inspiration to all. Provided with two armed helicopters, he moved fearlessly through the enemy fire to control the air attack against the firmly entrenched enemy while skillfully directing one platoon in a successful counterattack on the key enemy positions. Having thus cleared a small area, he requested and directed the landing of two transport helicopters for the evacuation of dead and wounded. He then assisted in mopping up the final seizure of the battalion's objective. His gallant in initiative and heroic conduct reflected great credit upon himself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the U.S. Naval Service. Now let's all please stand and applaud and welcome Mr. Barnum. Because you are the future leaders. You are the future admirals and generals, congressmen, senators, doctors, lawyers, school teachers, police, firemen. You're preparing by your education here at Wakefield to be ready to step up to take on some responsibilities. And I say to you, you're, you're, you're climbing a ladder of success. And I want you to set your goals high. Set them way up there. And as you climb that ladder, never say I can't, never say it's too hard, and take the word failure out of your vocabulary. Because if you make up your mind to do something, you can do it. And if you come upon something that you can't cope with, you can't solve, you don't know which direction to take. That's what your instructors, your teachers, your coach, your counselors are all about. So you go to them and ask them, and they'll give you a little guidance. But you've got to be the one to admit that you may need a little assistance. They're there to get you going down the right track. So confide in them. Because as I said, you're climbing that ladder of success. You are building a foundation for the rest of your life right now at Wakefield High School. And you know when you build a foundation that you're going to put walls and a house on, that foundation has got to be strong. Because when you put a foundation in, if it's not strong and you put walls on it and then a roof, pretty soon the walls are going to fall down and the roof's going to cave in. So the most important part of your life right now is to build that strong foundation. 
upon which you're going to build the walls of life. And when you graduate from college or out in corporate America or in the military, then you put the roof on that house. And that roof's going to stay there for a long time if you've had a strong foundation. So that's what you're doing now. You're building that strong foundation. And it's up to you. There's no free lunch out there, my friends. There's no free lunch. You're going to get what you work for. If you don't work for it, you're not going to get it. But if you work for it, it's out there, and you can get it. So that's the challenge that you have right now. And there's one other thing I'd like to leave with you. And then Doc Ingram is going to be up here, and then we're going to open it up to questions and talk about some things you want to talk about. You're all taking chemistry. You all know that every action has a reaction, right? OK. So when you're making a decision in life, that's an action. Think of a reaction. Think about, is that going to make mom and dad, grand and gramps, my coach, is that going to make them happy? Is it the right thing to do at the right time for the right reason? It better be. You're all under a lot of peer pressure, and a lot of you will bow to peer pressure. And then that reaction may not be what you really want. I've got to tell you something. Everything you do today is going to affect the rest of your life. You cannot change what you did yesterday, but you can affect them all in years out. So always do the right thing. And if it means walking away from the gang because they want to do something stupid, then do it. Be your own self. Be your own self. Make your own way. And the most important person you have to make happy and proud of, and that's yourself. Okay? So I want you to, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. And the other thing is, I feel like I'm talking to my granddaughter right now, Facebook, Twitter. Be careful what you put on there. It is there forever. It is there forever. And a lot of you think it's cute to show a risque photo of yourself at a party. Oh, you, you know what I'm talking about, huh? All right. So you might get a few laughs. Everybody that has access to the internet can see that photo. There are some bad people out there. There are some predators. And they're looking for stuff like that. Because they figured if you're dumb enough to put it on Facebook, then maybe you're an easy prey. That's reality. And you better face up to it. And then some of the comments that you put on Twitter. That's there forever. So you're out of college and you're going to corporate America for a big interview. You know the personnel department has looked at everything, your Facebook and your Twitter since you were in Wakefield High School. And if there's a trend in there that you're really not a quality person or you've done many, many dumb things and you're there and it's up between you and someone else for that job and they are perfect clean down the middle. Guess who's going to get the job? So what I'm saying is, what you're doing now, at this phase of life, is you climb that ladder of life and reach out for those goals. It's going to be with you. So build that strong foundation so that the walls of life and the roof that you cap it off with, the roof is marriage, children, family will remain intact and not cave in. So good luck and Godspeed. Get in step with a beaten drum and stay in step.
for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, while serving as squadron of Company C, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, against elements of a North Vietnam aggressor, Italian and Quang Nai Province Republic of Vietnam on the 28th of March, 1966. Petty Officer Inger of Company the Point Platoon has aggressively dispatched an outpost of an NBA battalion. The momentum of the attack rolled off a ridge line down a tree covered slope to a small paddy in the village beyond. Suddenly, the village tree line exploded in a tense hail of automatic rifle fire from approximately 100 North Vietnamese regulars. In mere moments, the platoon ranks were decimated. Oblivious to the danger, Petty Officer Inger crawled across the boat's side of the train to reach a down marine. As he administered aid, a bullet went through the palm of his hand, calls to force him, echoed across the ridge. Bleeding, he edged across the fire stuff landscape, collecting ammunition from the dead and administering aid to the wounded. Receiving two more wounds before realizing the third wound was life threatening, he looked for a way off the face of the ridge, but again he heard the call for foreman and again he resolutely answered. Though severely wounded three times, he rendered aid to those incapable until he finally reached the right flank of the platoon. While addressing the head wound of another foreman, he sustained his fourth bullet wound. From 1,600 hours up just until prior to sunset, Petty Officer Ingram pushed, pulled, cajoled, and doctored his Marines. Enduring the pain from his many wounds and disregarding the probability of his demise, Petty Officer Ingram's intimate actions saved many lives that day. By his indomitable fighting spirit, daring initiative, and unfaltering dedication to duty, Petty Officer Ingram reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. Now, if anyone, everyone could please stand as I am pleased to introduce to you a Petty Officer Ingram. Thank you. How did I follow Barney? It's one of the greatest speakers we have. He covered all, all the material. But he missed one thing. Uh, these citations are very flowery. They tell a lot about eh, maybe what happened out in the field. Maybe not. I know in most of the recipients that I know, the citation does not half cover what really happened and what they really did on that field. In my case, it was all about one of the words that the United States Marine Corps uses is, is their holy grail, and that's honor, courage, and commitment. In my case, I was committed to my company, my team, and when we went into that battle, and I was to the extent that I was not worth a whole lot at that point, then it all came back to one thing. Marine Corps motto, courage. If, if I leave y'all with anything today, I'd like to leave you with this word, courage, because I doubt seriously if too many of you can define it very well. It is a conscious decision made moment by moment to do the right thing. It's pertinent to every man, woman, and child in every situation that ever comes up. Y'all have to make a decision and as you know by now, these decisions are life-lasting. The decision you make today, the decision you make five minutes from now, is going to live with you the rest of your life. So you need to make the right decision. If I come back here in the future, I see one of y'all, I'm going to ask you to define the word courage, because I think it is utterly important. A conscious decision made moment by moment to do the right thing, and you know in your heart what the right thing is. Thank you. So I'd like to thank Mr. Ingram, and I'd like to invite him back up and give uh, the two gentlemen here the opportunity to answer some questions if there are any from our. Um, Student body or faculty? There's a question up there that I'd like to ask. Well, why are you thinking about it? Let me tell you something else. War is horrifying, not glorifying. Those of us that there are many World War II jets and three more Vietnam veterans here in the audience. 
And they will tell you, war is horrifying. But the reason we have a strong military is to protect the freedoms that you and I enjoy every day. There, we live right now in the most disturbing, unsettled, volatile world that I have seen in my life. There are people who despise everything that you and I, your parents, grandparents, Uncle Joe and Aunt Sadie, believe in. They want to tear us down. They want to change us to their ways. We've been fighting isms for a long time. World War II, we fought totalitarianism. Nazism. Then in Korea and Vietnam, we fought another ism. Communism. And now we're fighting the toughest ism that we've ever fought. Terrorism. There are religious, fanatic fundamentalists that want to tear us down, who want to destroy our way of life, our democracy, everything we believe in. We can't let that happen. That's the reason we have a strong military. A strong military is a deterrent against these bad guys. If we have a strong military, they know when they take us on, what's going to happen. We're going to drive them in the ground like a pin stick. We're not going to put up with them. But that's the reason we have the military. And i got to tell you, World War II, Jets are the greatest generation. That's what Tom Brokaw said, right? You read that in the book? This sailor and this marine represent the newest, greatest generation of the United States of America. <laughs> and they represent the hundreds of thousands of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines, and coast guardsmen who wear the cloth. Who voluntarily raise your hand? There is no craft. You don't have to serve in the military. It's something to think about. Serve in the military, get back to the country, and gave you everything. Well, they have. They take it over, and they solemnly swore to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. They know the enemies used to be foreign all the time, but we got a lot of homegrown terror. And these young rubber snappers are ready to take them on and, and, they, and the those they represent. So uh, that's the reason we have a strong military. And uh, they said, uh, and I also like to recognize uh, the law enforcement folks that are here. You know, last Friday was the 14th anniversary of 9-11. Most of you are about four years old, then, so you don't really remember. I want to tell you, it changed all our lives that day. But you know what? I look at the, the positives. You know, another thing you learn in math, you put two negatives together to get a positive. But I look at the positive aspects of 9 11. It brought this country together. We came together, one team, one fight, because someone was trying to take us down. But we sort of uh, dropped that pack of concern and patriotism because uh, life's been pretty good. You know why it's been pretty good? You know why we have been attacked? Law enforcement, another thing after 9 11, law enforcement agencies, intelligence gathering agencies, all around this great country came together. They started sharing information, communicating with each other. It wasn't about them, it was about us. see this, but they've taken down some very serious plots before they had a chance to execute. So, you know, show the men and women in blue the respect that they earn, deserve, because they're there for you. And I know today, uh, a little 
concerned around this great country of people who don't respect law enforcement. And it hurts me. It's hard enough to lose an American in wartime against an enemy that's a declared. But to fight these terrorists or just come up and shoot a police officer, I want to tell you, that doesn't say much about this country. So again, if you see here anything that's out of place, step forward, do your duty, and make sure that the officials know that. Because together, we will win. We will win. You don't spell the word America in your mind. What are the last four letters? I can. As Americans, we can do anything to put our minds to it. Okay, who's got a question? Who's got a question? Stand up. Speak up. So, and then I got up the next morning and got to work early. 
about five o'clock. It was at it was about midnight that night before all my people were accounted for. We have a recall system, and I I made sure that we put that that uh, communications tree in, in motion. It was about midnight when I found out everybody who worked for me got home. And so I got to work in the morning, no lights, I'm up on the fifth deck, I'm up the ladder way, and I'm sitting at my desk, and fire broke up, a seal over my desk, and it traveled along those big wooden beams uh, over three corridors. The fire department came in and said, get out. And I moved my, my, my operations to the Marine Corps Command Center up on the hill at the Navy Annex. But that day it changed our lives forever. And as I said, that we came together, uh, we went across the pond and we took on the bad guys. As we know now, it's been about 12 years and it's, we've been at war. So one of my concerns is that we pulled out of Iraq, we pulled out of Afghanistan. The American public is impatient. They want to get things done. They get tired of war. Well, we all get tired of war, but sometimes it takes a while. So, one another concern I have is our friends around the world saying, you know, we get in trouble. The United States comes, are they going to stay or are they going to pull out? We'll pull out of Somalia, we'll pull out of Iraq, we'll pull out of Afghanistan. So, uh, uh, in the eyes of the world, uh, we're not looked around as favorably. It's only because of the pressure the American public puts on the politicians, and that is uh, to bring the boys home. You ask the boys and the girls to raise their hand, support, and defend. They want to stay, get the mission done, be successful, beat him up, come home. Okay. All right, next question.
I'd just like to introduce uh, Joe Boudreau and Julianne Borg, both seniors, who would like to uh, just say uh, one last thank you to you both for coming, and I uh, believe they have a little um, gift in the next second. On behalf of the administration, this one. On behalf of the administration, faculty, staff, and students here at Wakefield Memorial High School, I am so pleased and proud to be thanking Mr. Harvey Barnum and Mr. Robert Ingram for their bravery and commitment to our service country. Winston Churchill once stated, never before in the course of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. I firmly believe that this aptly describes our thoughts here today as we cannot thank Mr. Barnum and Mr. Ingram enough for their service. It is indeed a privilege for us to be honored by the presence of these two recipients of our nation's highest military honor. So on behalf of the school, I know it's not much, but we'd like to give you both a bad That has something in it. Mr. Barnum's and Mr. Ingram's story uh, to our, in our service to our country it is an inspiration to us all. And we should not just take what they told us today as a memory or a mere thought. We should learn from it and apply it to our normal day life and our normal routines. So thank you again. And on this note, I want to welcome our principal, Ms. Marcos. So, just to close the ceremony, I know our gentlemen are going to be actually escorted out and they're going to be heading uh, via state police escort back out to the helicopter um, and will, uh, as a school community, be escorted back to our classes. But uh, I'd just like to say one last thank you to our guests and all of their liaisons, uh, all of our representatives and parents who are here today. Uh, all of you for your attention and your focus here. Uh, Dr. Smith, I forgot to mention earlier today, our superintendent, uh, members of the school committee, Ms. Morgan, who's here. Um, we, we really, uh, as a school, I, I'm always so proud of these events. We have them so rarely, and um, this is a, a, a great place to be. It's a great place to come to work every day. For all of us, it's our second home. And uh, for me, it's an absolute great day to be a warrior. So thank you all.